Good morning, everybody. Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah? Yes, I hear you. Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. So we start our morning session. It's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Professor Kalantarov, who is the first lecture. Professor Kalantarov has a long history of cooperation and friendship with the group of Olga Alexander Ladizhinska, with scientists and with our laboratory. So it's my great pleasure to have this talk here, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, first, uh, I, I am very thankful to organizers, especially Daria Pushkinskaya, Alexander Nazarov for organization of this conference, very nice conference. Uh, I am very sorry that I couldn't come to the conference in St. Petersburg. And I would, I would love to be with you these days, of course. Um, actually, it's written that I am from Istanbul. Really, I work in Istanbul, but uh, today I am in Baku, in, in my motherland. And uh, it is uh, uh, the view of uh, Baku, and Baku is the city where, where I was Alexandra in 1975. In 1975, uh, Institute of Mathematics of Academy of Sciences of Azerbaijan and uh, 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 Steklov Institute organized a joint uh, workshop uh, of the, the name Spectral Theory of Operators and Applications. But this uh, conference uh, uh, had two sections. One of them really was devoted to the Spectral Theory and, uh, and its applications in, uh, in functional analysis in differential equations. But the second section was devoted purely to the problems of nonlinear problems of mathematical physics and mostly on problems of uh, complete integrability of uh, uh, partial differential equations. You remember that this year, this year starting from the phase uh, of Garden Green, Kruskal, Miura, uh, and then later on Shabbat and Zakharov, uh, Fadeev and Zakharov, uh, many mathematicians uh, started uh, working in this field and Olga Alexandrovna was the one of the co-organizers of this conference, and uh, she uh, was the head of section where almost all the talks were devoted to these kind of problems. I would like to share with you the names of some mathematicians. It is not the, absolutely not the full uh, list of uh, participants, but Daletsky was there, Zakharov, uh, Kastuchenko, Boris Maesev, Shlivitan, uh, Lapidevsky from uh, Novosibirsk, Manakov, uh, the student of uh, Zakharov, Marchinka, uh, famous Vladimir Alexandrovich Marchinka, Fedoryuk, uh, Mityagin, uh, Posner, um, uh, Vladislav Vasilich Pohnachov, Rothovik Hetov, Sadovnichi, Sukhov, uh, Leon Tahtajan, uh, and, and many others, one of them, and so some of them are not here. For instance, I remember that Maxim Skriganov was also was uh, one of the participants of this conference. And uh, at this conference, I met Olga Alexandra Naladizhenska, and the problem I am going to speak about actually appeared from the one, one um, publication of Zakharov, uh, which uh, appeared in 1974. Uh, and uh, now I would like to show you some pictures and to speak about uh, the visits of Olga Alexandrovna to uh, Azerbaijan, to Baku, and the next city where she liked very much was the Ganja city. You see here the lake Gökyol, uh, near this lake in 1984, if I'm not mistaken, we organized a, a conference on nonlinear problems of mathematical physics. And you see here the, uh, some, some part of the participants of this conference. You see to the left, uh, uh, Stanislav Nikolaevich Krushkov, our colleague from Baku, this are Oktay Viliev, Nariman, uh, Anatoly Babin, uh, Andrei Fursikov, Yulia Andreevich, um, Dubinsky, Mikhail Salamonovich, Birman, uh, Mirabas Gasimovich, uh, um, Mirabas uh, Georgievich Gasimov, uh, Ivan Ilyich Daniluk, it's me, and, um, and Ivanov Alexander Vasilyevich. And in, in the second, the first row, you see here Lova Kapitansky, Ilham Mamedov, Isayev, uh, uh, 
Allah verdik mi kırdı şanat sana sağlık Alex. This conference also was very interesting conference as the conference in the in Zagulba in, in Baku. The problem is that at this conference uh, uh, there were much more participants than you see here. Nina Nikolaevna, I don't remember whether she was there, but perhaps she was there. I I I am very sorry to. Sel Galixej was there, of course, and many other mathematicians. This this conference is there were one of the not uh, very very representative and interesting conferences of that time. Um, uh, Olga Alexandrovna visited Baku uh, five, uh, I think five times. Uh, uh, she was invited by Institute of Mathematics and Mechanics, and then uh, she came to organize these conferences. And uh, uh, this picture is a picture from uh, Ankara. She visited in 19... 99 uh, uh, Ankara uh, Middle East Technical University and in Istanbul Faza Gürse Institute. Uh, uh, actually, she was invited by Faza Gürse Institute and visited both cities, Istanbul and Ankara. Here, um, she it, it is a her a picture taken in the old part of uh, Ankara. It's um, she liked the uh, carpets she had seen there, and the, this is the picture taken in. Uh, Museum Topkap. <clears throat> the second one is all, this one is the uh, is the picture uh, I took in when um, in the during the boat trip through through Bosphorus. Olga Alexander liked it, and especially he uh, he, he was <clears throat> she was um, uh, you know she visited many historical places, especially Hagia Sophia. And I remember her praying in both of these, in, in the in the church and in in the mosque. Uh, and now I would like to start speaking about the uh, development and um, some uh, recent results of um, obtained in our joint paper on blow up of solutions of nonlinear parabolic and hyperbolic equations. Uh, uh, which was published uh, exactly 55 years ago. And the, the, uh, I would like to speak about the history of that, of that paper because uh, the result I am going to present today is, is, is using the main paper and, and how it appeared. The problem is that when I came to Steklov Institute in Leningrad, uh, Olga Alexandrovna suggested me to uh, to uh, study the problem of uh, global solvability of Cauchy problem for those equations uh, for which the uh, Zaharov Shabbat and Zaharov, uh, Zaharov Fadev, Garden, Garden, Gardner Grun, Green, Neura Kruskal, um, and others, they found the Lux pairs. The first equation she, she suggested was the Kortbeck de Vries equation. But soon I, uh, and I Solved easily because I found the solution of the problem in the book of uh, Lyons, uh, where uh, the result of uh, uh, Roger Temambo is uh, presented. Uh, the result about global solvability of the initial boundary value problem for the KDV equation um, under the periodic boundary conditions. And in, uh, about that time, uh, about the same time, Schombeck solved the problem of. The, the, the uh, published a, a paper about solution of the Cauchy problem for KDV equation. And the second problem was this equation, the famous Businesk equation. The problem is that uh, Zaharov found in 74, 1974, Lux pair for the <clears throat> uh, Businesk equation you see here. <clears throat> and it was reasonable to understand whether it is possible to, uh, to, uh, to, to prove a global solvability of initial boundary value problem or the Cauchy problem for this equation. Uh, I read the, the, the pre preprint of uh, Zaharov. It was not easy, but derived some conservation laws, some four or five conservation laws uh, uh, according to the recurrence relation uh, he gave there in, in, in that, in that preprint. I have not seen the paper uh, even after that. But even the first conservation law, law was very ugly. One cannot derive even the L2, uh, L2 estimate of the L2 norm uh, of solution of that equation. Uh, 
uh, uh, I hope that, it, it, as in the case of the nonlinear Schrodinger focusing equation, uh, one has L2 uh, estimate of L2 norm global estimate. And from the second uh, conservation law, you can derive some other estimate. But here, even L2 norm, it, is, it was impossible to, to derive the estimate. Later on, we understood that it is absolutely impossible to do that one. And, um, uh, and uh, a bit later, I will explain you how we did that one. The problem, and, uh, I started uh, to um, learn papers about, uh, some works about blow up of solutions of nonlinear partial differential equations according to advice of Olga Alexander and Olavijanska. And actually, the problem of global non-existence or blow up of solutions of nonlinear PDEs has received uh, considered interest since 60s of the last century. The interest to this kind of problems uh, was inspired by two main reasons. First reason is to describe the precise, uh, uh, to describe precise as possible the classes of nonlinear problems for, some, for which the initial boundary of a value of unique global in time solution. The second reason is the a rigorous mathematical justification and analysis of real processes where the blow up effects are observed. Actually, uh, this kind of uh, effects were observed long time ago, even in, in, uh, in 18th century, the uh, 19th century. Many, many partial differential equations, uh, people knew many partial differential equations whose, solu whose solution blow up in a finite time. Uh, and simple and effective examples of nonlinear partial differential sol uh, whose solutions may blow up in a finite time are demonstrated in the famous book of Ladijenska, uh, Salonikov, and Uralsova. There are some. There were some special papers devoted to the uh, blow up of solutions for uh, uh, some nonlinear parabolic equations uh, published in the paper of um, uh, Friedman, Filipov. Later on, uh, Keller, Kaplan, Fujita, Glasse, and others they uh, they devoted special papers to the problem of blow up of solutions of uh, nonlinear partial differential equations. Uh, Keller was first uh, to uh, consider the problem of uh, blow up of solutions of the Cauchy problem for near Klein Gordon equation, Kaplan for nonlinear parabolic equations. One can find uh, the, the, the uh, book, uh, the, the, uh, may, many think about this in the famous book of Samarsky, Kurdimov, Galaktionov, and, uh, and uh, Mikhailov. Um, Actually, the, I, I, I would like to skip this part of my talk. Let me, let me go ahead. The problem is that those papers were devoted, were devoted especially to second order equations. And the main idea there was to use the uh, maximum principle or the, uh, or the eigenvalue of the Laplace operator in some bounded domain is sign preserving positive, for instance. Or, the uh, positivity of the green function or Riemann function for second order parabolic and hyperbolic equations. The main idea was uh, that one. For uh, higher order equations like the Busanesque equation, uh, these methods are not applicable in general. And uh, uh, in the beginning of the 70s appeared the paper of Tsutsumi who considered this kind of equations in, in a Hilbert space where A is uh, self adjoint positive definite operator. In a Hilbert space, F is now linear operator with gradient operator, which satisfies this kind of inequality. Here, uh, uh, norm is norm of the Hilbert space uh, where the equation is considered, and P is some number greater than two. In using the very elementary energetic uh, uh, inequalities, um, Tsutsumi found. Uh, sufficient conditions of blow up of solutions of this uh, of the Cauchy problem for this equation. And of course, uh, from this one, one can derive uh, many, many results for nonlinear wave equations. And similar idea works for parabolic equations too, but I don't want to speak about that one now. Independently, actually, uh, Stanislav Ivanich Pahajayev and John Ball, they studied the uh, nonlinear Klein-Gordon equation. and. Use the same approach to show that 
there are some initial functions for which the solutions of the uh, of the wave equation uh, when the nonlinear term satisfies these conditions blow up in a finite time and discuss the probable solvability of solutions when the initial functions are not satisfying that uh, satisfying some other uh, sufficient condition interesting and very productive um, uh, interesting and really very useful uh, results obtained in the beginning of 70s, Howard Levin, he introduced the so-called concavity method for uh, uh, st to study the problem of blow up of solutions of nonlinear parabolic and uh, nonlinear wave equations. And if you see here, here P is some uh, positive uh, symmetric uh, operator, A is a, a, a self-adjoint positive operator, and F is some uh, gradient operator. It means that it is uh, the gradient of some uh, functional. And under some restrictions on the nonlinearity, uh, uh, Levin could uh, show that uh, the solutions of this kind of, uh, of the Cauchy problem for this kind of equations, they blow up in a finite time. Actually, uh, it's better to say that he showed that uh, the initial value problem for the Cauchy problem for this equation cannot have a global solution uh, uh, under some restrictions on the on the initial data uh, 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 initial data may be, may have may, they may be very very smooth but anyway the solution may uh, may blow up in a finite time here was the following one you consider some function for instance in the case of the wave equation you consider this kind of function better to say functional for the parabolic case, you consider the second one with the integral from zero to t, and then consider the function of phi capital T, which is psi to the power minus alpha t, where alpha is some positive number. And the idea is the following one. Try to show that this function, uh, this function phi is a concave function. In, uh, so what you, what's the idea? You, you, you choose initial functions so that phi at the point zero is positive. Derivative of this function at the point zero is negative. So the function is decreasing and it is concave down. <clears throat> Therefore, it is clear that this function will reach zero after in a finite time. And, and uh, since phi will reach uh, 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 zero in a finite time, the psi will then tend to infinity in a finite time. The whole idea is this one. I and simple, but, uh, uh, application of this uh, idea to concrete problems, uh, of course, it, it requires some effort. In some situations, very, very, uh, very, very difficult. It was very difficult to to check that one. The idea of using the so-called concavity method actually belongs, perhaps, if I am not mistaken, to Palanov, who in sixty in 1966 first showed that the Cauchy problem for the uh, cubic nonlinear focusing Schrodinger equation uh, has solutions that blow up in a finite time. And, the, and there, that idea was then later on uh, developed in the paper of Dekterov, Zakharov, and Rudakov. They did the following one. They considered this function, the second momentum of the solution. Here, U is the solution of the Cauchy problem for the Schrodinger equation, and uh, showed that. Uh, the second derivative of this uh, function is negative. Actually, at the beginning, the idea is the same. At, uh, at the beginning, this function is positive, derivative negative, and it is negative. And, the, and if second derivative is negative, then it is uh, concave down. So, assuming that the problem has a global solution, you are getting uh, you are uh, you are getting a contradiction because it cannot take negative values after some finite time. So, the idea was this one. Actually, when uh, this idea of Levin helped us to understand that the initial boundary value problem for the Poussinesque equation I showed here. Uh, so, uh, let, me, uh, let me go back. Uh, in, here, it is not U capital, it is a, a little U. I'm sorry for this misprint. So the initial boundary value problem for this equation under the periodic boundary conditions 
solution may uh, some solution blow up in a finite time. The problem, what we did, we applied to both sides of this uh, equation the inverse of the Sturm Liouville operator under the uh, periodic boundary condition and reduced it to the problem to the to Cauchy problem for this kind of equation. This one for this kind of equation where uh, here you have some inverse of the Sturm Liouville operator. Here you have the uh, Laplace operator, and here you have uh, the quadratic nonlinearity. And directly from the result of Levin, you are getting the uh, um, uh, result about blow up of solutions of the Boussinesque equation. Uh, this result, of course, was uh, for those who studied the Boussinesque equation, and they referred to the, to our papers, where we, by the way, we also uh, derived uh, some conservation laws, infinitely many conservation laws for the uh, degenerate Boussinesque equation for the, uh, the continuum analog of the uh, total lattice and some other nonlinear equations. So, but in the in in both papers of uh, Levin, the line that the method he applied is uh, applicable just when the operator A, this operator you will see here is a symmetric self-adjoint operator. Uh, the, any, any small perturbation of this operator, uh, some, some non-symmetric CT, or uh, when you consider some, uh, some elliptic operator with the uh, convective term, uh, it, it is not applicable. And in our uh, joint paper with Olga Alexandrovna Ladezhenska, uh, we considered two types of equations where we had here, the A, 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 a self-adjoint operator, and B is operator dominated by A, and, uh, and uh, generalized the result of Levin to more general uh, uh, semi-linear and then to quasi-linear equations. This, the, the result we obtained there then was used in many publications to uh, study the problem of blow up of solutions of uh, many nonlinear partial differential equations. And our idea was the following one. The problem is that the, 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 the uh, Levin's idea was to prove that the I mentioned, uh, mentioned is a, a concave function, but uh, here I'm sorry, here the inequality is here, it must be less or equal. I'm very sorry for this misprint. And uh, the, uh, it, it, it was clear that if you are able to show that uh, you, the function you consider satisfies this inequality, then you can uh, find the uh, conditions on initial data for which the function uh, phi will take uh, will approach zero after some time, which uh, uh, gives you uh, possibility to show that the corresponding function psi tends to infinity in a finite time. And to do that one, you have to uh, check this kind of ugly inequality for uh, the problem you are consistency. If you have some nonlinear wave equation, then psi might be the L2 norm of solution or some, some other norm. And the choice of this function psi uh, is in each concrete problem very essential. This, uh, the results we obtained were then uh, generalized in, uh, in subsequent by many authors. I would like to mention here a lemma used by uh, Kurdum of, uh, sorry, no, the um, uh, corpus of Hans Veshnikov to study uh, many nonlinear partial differential equations, mostly pseudo parabolic equations and nonlinear wave equations. So here I uh, presented here some books devoted to this, to this um, kind of problems. Uh, uh, and uh, in the last book, uh, uh, last book is a good reference for the methods uh, of. Um, uh, studying the uh, blow up of solutions for nonlinear partial differential equations, parabolic, hyperbolic, and many other equations. So, uh, but in all the uh, all the uh, results um, uh, appeared that time, one of the main conditions we imposed on initial functions was that the uh, the initial energy of solution is negative. Actually, this was the main result also in the paper of Levin. But it was not clear uh, whether um, it is possible to show that the solutions uh, of the problem of those problems blow up uh, when some initial initial for some initial functions for which the corresponding initial energy is a positive one. 
actually first result was a paint of this type in 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 74 by pain and settinger they used the so-called potential well technique to show that there are some initial functions whose energy is uh, positive uh, but not great Greater potential depths of uh, potential well, and for those solutions, also they uh, were able to prove the uh, blow up of solutions in a finite time. But uh, the problem of uh, classifying the whole class of initial functions for which the corresponding blow up in a finite time is still is an open problem. But there was a problem. Are there solutions with arbitrary positive initial energy for which the solution blows up in a finite time? In our paper with Olga Alexander, we didn't pay attention to this part of the uh, pro problem. Uh, for us, what it, what, what was important to know that the Busunesque equation and some other equations of this type, they blow up in a finite time. But uh, in the beginning of 80s, uh, I would like to underline the works of Corpus of Sveshnikov and they, they uh, modified, they used our uh, uh, method and modified that method to show that solutions of some nonlinear wave equations, uh, they uh, may blow up uh, even for uh, uh, when the initial energy takes arbitrary, uh, uh, take arbitrary positive value. Uh, actually, after that one, uh, 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 um, with PhD student Bilgesu uh, Bilgen, we uh, tried to use the approach of our paper to show that really the method uh, presented in our joint paper with Olga Alexandrovna can be used to solve this kind of problem too. And we considered uh, a general second order operator differential equations of this sort, used uh, where the nonlinear term satisfies these properties. Uh, I would like to say that here f of u might be a very, a very uh, an arbitrary polynomial, uh, for instance, an uh, arbitrary polynomial with uh, uh, dominated uh, with, uh, with, uh, with lower order term, terms to, that satisfies this condition. G u he, here is the uh, potential of the nonlinear operator f. That is, f is the fresh derivative of G u. And uh, following, uh, following Levin, who proved some result about the behavior of solutions of non damped nonlinear wave equations? We obtained this kind of uh, result about the behavior of solutions of the uh, damped uh, uh, second order equations. You see that under some restrictions on initial data, one can show that the solutions of the equation uh, they tend to infinity and it goes to infinity. Uh, 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 how much time I have? Perhaps finished? Uh, okay, so we generalize this result for this one for this kind of equations, and we have seen that really we can uh, prove uh, the blow up of solutions of this equation uh, in a finite time and apply to uh, initial boundary value problems for several type of uh, nonlinear wave equations. Allow me just one minute to present you our new result with uh, uh, Jamila Kalantarova. She, she knew Olga Alexandrovna too about the a blow up of solutions of a coupled system of uh, nonlinear equations of uh, 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 thermoelasticity type. Uh, uh, we proved that under some restrictions on the nonlinear term you see here, the corresponding solutions of that problem uh, may blow up in a finite time. And uh, uh, the, there are solutions with arbitrary uh, large initial energy which blow up in a finite time. This is the generalization of some result of Jacques-Louis Lyons, who in uh, his famous book about the optimal control of uh, sing uh, uh, problems uh, described by singular PDEs, he proved the problem of blow up of solutions of this kind of system when the initial energy is negative. And here uh, I give you the proof of this theorem presented this theorem. The main theorem is this one. We used, as you see, special type of the inequality, um, uh, uh, similar to the inequality in our joint paper with Olga Alexandrovna Ladezhenskaya. And finally, I would like to tell you that this method can be, uh, be used also uh, to, by the way, that uh, that result will soon appear in Mathematiski Zametki 
Uh, I don't know. This it soon will appear in mathematics is an it. We can we use that that method also to investigate the global behavior of solutions of the uh, equations of thermoelasticity type. Uh, and uh, similar results we obtained for this kind of system. And it, it's generalizing the result of, uh, for instance, of Masudi for the for this system of equations. So uh, uh, don't let me then stop here because uh, time is up. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. You. We have time for short questions. Who would like to ask question? May I ask you one thing? Do you do you have some estimates, qualitative estimates for this time T1 when uh, the blow up might be? Yes, you know, there, uh, we have some uh, estimates for that time, but we don't like those estimates. They are, of course, uh, very rough. We, we would like to have much better estimates. There are examples where we see that the estimates are not good enough, but we have some estimates from below. Okay, thank you. Yes, actually, actually, this is the very, very, very important question to 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 uh, predict the time of uh, the blow up. Actually, what we show it is not the blow up. I am calling it blow up. It is the first stage. We show that we assume that solution is glo global solution exists, and we are getting the contradiction. You know. So it is better to say global non-existence of solution. But uh, there are some results of other mathematicians which allow us to uh, make conclusion that the solution blow up in a finite time. For instance, the paper in the result of Irwin Siegel for nonlinear wave equation and other results, we can we can uh, conclude that the solutions blow up in a finite time. But there are some estimates of time of blow up and, and many many studies in this direction, but they are still uh, not not uh, not good enough. Thank, thank you. you for your attention. Thank you. I think we should thank the speaker again and stop here. And we have.